Okay, guys, welcome to another episode of Motivation. Yeah, hear me now? Yes. Okay. Good night, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Motivational Monday, where each one teach one. Father God, I thank you for everything that you have given us, dear Lord. I ask you to guide and protect our families, near and far. Bless us, guide us, and protect our paths in no other name but in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, guys, the word of this week will be nemesis. And nemesis is one that inflict retribution or revenge. Once again, the word of this week will be nemesis. One that inflicts retribution or vengeance. And I am going to give you a little health tip for this week, guys. But if you're celebrating a birthday today, I want to say happy, happy birthday. If you celebrated a birthday past weekend, happy, happy birthday to you guys. I know last week we had um, all the smoke from Canada came over to New York. And I just want to say I'm happy that everyone is safe. Um, you, you wear your mask and everyone is good. So I want to just read our mission statement. Our goal is to educate and empower anyone, regardless of race, culture, ethnicity, or faith struggling with an assortment of life adversities. We believe education enlightens dark paths, less traveled, liberates a sense of hopelessness. We believe the safety of transparency illuminates and activates the true meaning of caring, sharing, unveils, and in emancipate wholeness. Our goal statement are designated to introduce our informational life topics that surrounds individuals and our family, communities, and nation. So I want to talk a little bit about our health topic is what is RSV? RSV is respiratory cynical virus. It's contagious virus that usually mild but can severely affect the lungs and the respiratory airways in older adults. While you may not have heard of it yet, it is a new virus and may be more of a health concern than you think. Even if you are healthy and if you are age 60 or older, you can have RSV. But don't worry. The symptoms can range from mild to severe and can last up to two weeks. RSV can cause severe symptoms in older adults. Some of the symptoms include fever, cough, sore throat, runny nose, congestion, headache. Tiredness. The U.S. Center of Disease Control and Prevention states that adults at higher risk of RSV infection includes older adults, especially those over 65 and older. So I know with the smoke last week and everything, guys, continue to wear your mask and be safe out there, especially those that, you know, have asthma and things like that. Just take care of your health. All right, remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm just reading from Google so we all can stay healthy. So this afternoon, I have a special guest who took the time out to hang with us today. And her name is Dr. Sharon Ann Gopal McNichols. And I will just like to read a little introduction before I bring her on. A licensed bilingual Spanish psychologist specialized in clinical forensics, school, sports, development, research, and science, community, and cross-culture psychology for the past 35 years. Dr. Sharon Gopal McNichols has been an in 
International Psychology, International Psychology and Political Consultant throughout the Caribbean, the US, the UK, and Canada. As a psychology, I'm reading guys, so give me a moment, Professor. She authored 14 books on topics including assessment and culture, working with West Indian families, the ground bottom up, and the multi-system models of governing. I would now like to welcome Dr. Sharon Gopal McNichols. Thank you so much for spending time with us today and our program as you heard before it's all about each one teach one how are you doing today i'm fine and i want to personally thank you for this wonderful opportunity for me to speak to your audience most of them i probably feel an, a, a connection to brotherly sisterly or something or the other yeah um, having lived in the u.s myself for 23 years probably returning to the Caribbean. And you are so impressive. I like your style. I like the, the, the concept and the mission of the of, of the podcast and I thank you for having it. And today's um particularly I am very happy when you asked me to consider something about fatherhood, considering that Father's Day is on Sunday. Yes. And I instinctively it's the most natural thing for me. I immediately said black fatherhood which has often been misread, misinterpreted. And I have, in my own way, every opportunity I correct that. Yes. And I remember years ago myself as a professor when uh, uh, the faculty members were talking about the state of black men and black men and black fathers. And in that faculty meeting, I just said, I don't know who the hell you all are talking about. <laughs> black men and nothing like what you all are portraying here. Yes. I'm not going to have this. And I start to say, my experience with black men, my father, my husband, my friends here in the U.S. and in the Caribbean, they have been nothing but positive. And I say, quite frankly, I'm impressed with black men in my in an experience than any of the men I have met here. <laughs> upset everybody in this staff meeting. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, that's the nature of our top today. Re-exam that father and the concept concept of absent fathers. Right. And I think this is important for us to understand. So you tell me when you're ready to get rolling. Yes, I'm ready to get rolling. Ready? And you yes, and you're right. Yeah. I mean there's a lot of okay. Um, you know, absentee with fathers, a lot of single women now bringing up children. So let's get cracking. And that is true. We kind of deny the stats that there's more single parenting than, the, than it was, say, 40 years ago when yes. I, you know, was doing my doctoral studies. Yes, there's much more, but there's much more in the white community. There's much more all over the world single parenting. Yes. And, and that does not translate into fathers not being involved. Yes, they are they are involved in that, they're involved in co-parenting, but the negativity about black fathers' involvement is what's featured more than any other ethnic group involvement. And yes. I don't want to make this a racial or ethnic issue. Right. The point is, yes, both a good, even though it's only 12% of adult black people um, over... 40% or so make up the prison system are black men. Right. But then again, over 30% are white men who make up a larger percentage. So sure enough, black men are more represented in the prison system. And as a result, one can well imagine they will be obviously more absent. Right. But they are still involved. Their, their partners bring the children. And it's just what I'm trying to say is that Let's focus as well on the positive apps, um, aspect of black parenthood, period. Yes. Whether it's men or women. In this case, we're focusing on black men. But of course, before doing that, we have to look at where it all started. Right. I mean, where did the negative images of black fathers start? Yes. How could we not understand that it would have started as far back as slavery? Right. Yes. I mean, it's, it's obvious. And, and 
and it's a divisive kind of, of system that black people endured for 500 years. And, and sure enough, it would have had its impact up to now because we do pattern what we were socialized to experience. I remember my, my thesis back then, 36 years ago, was on the doll study. You may remember the name of Dr. Kenneth Clark. Right. And he was the guy who brought about desegregation in the United States. He was a social psychologist who brought about desegregation in the United States because of his doll study, which showed that black children and white children chose the black doll towards everything negative and the, and the white doll towards everything positive. And that is was so ingrained. When I tested my dissertation, looked at that in the context of the Caribbean. Right. The Caribbean has all black population, black leaders, black role models. So how could it be that the result was a exactly the same as it was with African-American and, and white American children. How could it be that black children in the Caribbean choose the black doll towards everything negative and, 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 and the white doll towards everything positive? How right. could it be? Right. Whether it was boys or girls. Yes. Whether that is a, a, a action of the so guys, every single person in the Caribbean, education, health, everything in spite of the leaders being black it did not feature in the education system right. so for instance when i was looking through scientifically the books that children read when it comes to drug in the chapter they showed a black man right. a raster. Right. when it comes to science they showed a white man yeah. so that's what children got so do you see how the indoctrination yeah. carries through in every part of the world yeah. if, not just because it's a numerical preponderance you have more black um, people in the Caribbean that you would have expected a different result is what the children digest through yeah. the media, through the education, through the social system and, and religious systems. Yeah. I mean, the images of God being nothing but white. Yes. And so all of that is where it's starting. And so the concept of black father uh, and it must be looked at in that context. Now, notwithstanding that, we are looking at a situation where, with the coming of, of, of Barack Obama, we saw there was a lot of hope that maybe right. there will be a change in the person and so on. And there was to some extent. And then when, when the coming of Trump, we yes. recognized that he didn't actually create what we are seeing now. Yes. He brought it out. It yes. never <laughs> left. Yes. It never left the U.S. It simply never left. And he just knew that that was a population he could tap into to get numbers. Right. And so he brought it out. So what we are seeing is a reigniting of the negativity associated with black men. Right. To the point where people are afraid when they come out of, in, in, in the night at some event and they see a black man. I see it with my husband and I. Sometimes we walk in a situation and you could feel the tension until they see us holding hands and they see, right. oh, they look like a nice thing. Yes, yes. And this really, I only experienced since the coming of Trump, because in all the years I live abroad, I didn't experience the tension in this way. Right. So this is the reality with what we are looking at here today. And one of the things I want you to understand that there's a strong correlation, a strong relationship between hate yes. speech and violence, between disseminating hateful and negative things about people and violence. And, and that's where you're seeing it with the stand your ground laws and so yes. in, in, in the U.S. now. It's a lot of that the now. The frustration the, for black people, what I want you to understand, and then I'm going to pause a bit. For black people, you need to understand when you are constantly bombarded and dehumanize and made to feel that everything about you is criminal and negative, it turns into frustration. Yes. And frustration, which left unchecked, if frustration is not left unchecked, because you know otherwise, why do they see this way? So you're frustrated. If it is left unchecked, frustration changes to anger. Yes. And anger is manifested either aggression outwardly in its extreme, you can see side or aggression inward is depression when you turn your anger inward it becomes depression and that's how in its extreme you can see suicide and that is why
the rate of homicide and suicide, they are increasing among our men, white men, in the case of their frustration that they are said they are feeling marginalized with everything, anything that they see uplifting blacks, they feel marginalized by. And black people, their frustration that no matter what they do, they continue. So you see how homicide and suicide could be manifested in a society. Yes. And that's what I really want us to look at before getting into the uh, um, the supportive programs to uplift black um, fathers. There are quite a few of them right there in the U.S. Yes. And all over the world, they have um, they are duplicated in, in the, all of these. Different. Before getting into that, I want to pause a minute to see if anyone has any questions or yes. you have any comments. Yes, I have a question for you here. Um, some people are saying that, yes, some people are saying that single, that single parent home leads to breakdown in a song family structure. That was one of the questions. Well, there is no question. All of us who, um, who were mothers and are mothers know it is harder without a, a support system. Right. Long ago, when we were children, there was a it takes a village. Hillary Clinton wrote a book, It Takes a Village to Raise a Child. Yes. That concept is deeply rooted in the African community, wherever you are. And so you always had support systems. So when you have single parents now, officially single parents, without community support systems, because that's another thing. Yes. You don't see the kind of community support systems that we used to have. You knew your neighbor's neighbors. Yes. Could wreck you, spank you, whatever. Now... You don't even know the neighbors. Yeah, exactly. So, the, your caller is correct. The single parent is really operating in a single fashion. Right. Whereas long ago, there were many single parents, many people who were not married officially, uh, <laughs> live in common law relationships, which in the Caribbean is considered very much of a marital relationship legally. Right. But, it, 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 but it, they always had support. They had support in the schools. Yeah. Now the teachers are a bit distant and so on. So she is correct. It is harder to pair up. Yes. But that's one of the, the platforms that, that people are creating for their fathers. How do you have support systems rallying around them? As a young parent, for instance, one of the things I did in my community in, in Hempstead in Long Island was in New York, was we had all the young parents in the street. I rung them up and I said, listen, what about on a Friday? two parents are responsible for supervising all the children. Right. And so that the other parents go out and have some fun every Friday, except one Friday a month, you had your turn to work. So you had three Fridays that you could go out with your friends, right. get a break. And so I did that. And acting works so well, step you, you know, because you, 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 you have three Fridays to have some kind of free time. Yes. You know, so, but she's correct, whoever is correct yeah. about a single parent, yeah. Yeah, I think so Any too. Any more questions? Yes. I have another, I, I yes. That's interesting. I have another one. The notion that the kids in certain areas are more vulnerable because of their location. If so, what can be done about it? You know, um, like different areas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, it speaks to socioeconomic situations where certain communities are considered low socioeconomic communities with less support. Now, in the Caribbean, interestingly, why we may not have a race issue in, in, in the sense of how it is manifested in America, we have a classist issue, right. class discrimination based on socioeconomic. So poor communities, for instance, result in schools not getting the kind of support right. in those communities. Right. <laughs> as the as the more elitist communities produce schools of great support and that is an additional um, factor that poor families have to deal with. Yes. There isn't the same. There is no such thing as equal opportunity. Right. You know, it's you're separate in a sense, you're separate and remain unequal. Books have been written on that. Right. And so the, your comment is correct. What could be done? The only thing you could is I, I, when we go into the platforms of support here, you will see something will resonate. 
but it is important that you speak out those of you in communities that you're not getting the kind of support it's important that you speak out to your senators your congress people in the case of the caribbean your members of parliament and your right. councillors and so on it's important that you let them know that part of their responsibility right. is soliciting that additional support needed for the communities right i must say that this administration, the Biden administration that I'm watching, I monitor them all around the world. Yes. They are bringing forward lots of programs right. that poor communities could benefit from. So as to your calling and to your audience, let's just take use of our cell phones. Google support systems for poor communities. Right. And you will see what will come up state the community where you live put the state where you live and you will see it that i'm fascinated about right. how you can get these things see. so quickly yes then you have an email there you can use your phone to email yes you can do it on the court you know so just do that you don't have to be not because my mom wanted no part of these cell phones but she was of a totally different generation passed on now yes. over 80 years ago but she didn't want it well the average person even over 70 80 they know how to answer a cell phone yes you show them how to put the kid where to go to just put in the information they want grandchildren you step up and show them and of course the parents you have to do it because there are programs there we just don't tap into them right we only know about what is for welfare or what for, no there are many programs there and many financially supported programs yes that give basis and and um and what is the next one uh, you know the computer genius these fellas and they donate billions of dollars into funds right for this kind of thing right philanthropic reasons yes okay yeah. So good. tell them to look at that. Good, 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 yeah. good idea. Good idea. Yes. All right. So you can continue now. Yeah. Okay. So, well, we are about halfway into the program, and I would like to look at the platforms. Unless you have a pressing question, I always like to respect the callers. I would like to move on to the what are the areas and platforms where you can find uplifting and supportive services for black families black fathers right. in particular yes right you ready yes. for me to go ahead yeah because what i wanted to say is that i find that you know black fathers um people as well society is very hard on them you know black fathers and i think that they should be recognized more and they should be respected more also i think you know because they're trying some of them could try a little harder but you know the respect and let me tell you, you know, sometimes we don't sit and really think for a moment what it is like to be a black man in this world of yesterday and today in the Trump era, you know, right. post-Trump era. It is a hell of a challenge, you know, that everywhere you walk in, depending on how you look, yes. if you do happen to be lighter-skinned black, you might be less of a threat. If you happen to be dark-skinned that's a whole other challenge. As right. Well. And this is, and this is a reality. People don't like to hear these things, but yes. this is the truth. It's true. You, you see it, you see it all the time. This skin color thing is a frightening thing. Yes. In in, in uh, within even within the black community. Yes. And so you know, I I must tell you, it is really something that you have to admire black men who manage to navigate this kind of discriminatory world right it's like the other day someone said to um biden he said on tv he never had to have the talk it's called the talk yes with black boys yes with black men yes he never had to have that with his children right that is something that every single black parent must have with their black sons yes the talk and the talk is basically if the police pull you over Keep your hands on the wheel. Yes. Don't remove your hand. Yes. No. Me, I would be. I know for me, I know not. What do you want, officer? <laughs> yes. Yeah. This would. This would have 
with me before understanding all of this stuff? What do you want? What did you come here before? You think he act with ever now as a woman? Well, when I noticed, he was always calm that way. Right. Always understood it that way. And that's the day-to-day -day life that a black man... So it is not easy. You are right. I'm proud of, of the fact that you just made that statement because that is important. Yeah. And then within the black community, there, there are issues of, you know, the poor black versus the, the, the more upscale wealthy black. Then there is the educated black versus the non-educated. And of course, as I just referenced, there is the dark skin versus light skin. And all of these things uh, we have to deal with. And then in the Caribbean, we have to deal with the Indian black versus right. the Afro black, right. African black, yeah. and it, 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 especially in Trinidad and Guyana. So these are the challenges that we are Okay, and jumping with the, the support. This is a divide the name of you want to take note of this I'll end it you any day yeah. Paul Brown it was published since last year July 2022 July 25th what's her name again and she captured very nicely Taylor S-H-A-Y-L-A -A Brown yes published July 25th 2022 and she spoke about platforms that uplift and support black fathers and she went in into the descriptive nature of each of them and what they offer. And basically, it's it's looking at even including absent black fathers, how they are portrayed so negatively in the media, even though the research is showing that this is not as bad and as always the case as the media tend to portray the negativity, right. the complete negativity of black Black fathers. Black fathers are co-parenting now more than any other time. They are co -co doing a lot of co-parenting. They are present in different ways and so on. So it, it is very unfortunate when you see this kind of image pr presented about um, black fathers. Yes. So she spoke about, she spoke about, let me see, I want to get the first big one that she covered here. Okay. She said there's a black father foundation that i really like a lot and she said in the black father foundation what they do is they challenge the misrepresentation of black fathers so what is good is that let's say you get arrested and you're wrongfully arrested yes. separate and apart from a lawyer you might want to look at the black father's foundation if you're a black man right who got arrested who finding it difficult, you were discriminated at the job, who need resources and support just to strive in our country and in, in our world, and the chance to define your reality, what really happened, not what the media put out there. Right. So this Black Fathers Foundation, I found it very helpful. And when I checked in and, 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 and did my own research, I was very impressed because they are saying that half of all of the black children, while they may live in single families, it does not mean that the father is out of the picture. Right. And so the negativity portrayed is not always the case. But we also know that white families have the highest rate of divorce, really. They have always had a high rate of divorce. Multi-layered step families are the order of the day now in the world, where there is all kind of step parents, and that's a normal thing now. And so they are talking, this, this um, group, Black Fathers Foundation, they are supporting you when you are in trouble. So I want you to know, when you Google Sh Shayla Brown, yes, look at the Black Fathers Foundation. Another area that I liked a lot was um, this, this other group was the Fatherless Incorporated. The Fathers Incorporated, they call themselves. It was published since 2004 and what they are, are saying is that they are looking at how do you empower communities right that's the fathers incorporated how do you empower communities bringing a network of people to support fathers so this is an additional support that they have now beyond 
just one state. It's yes. all over the, the U.S., for instance. Nice. And they equipped, they equipped supportive services in the line of even educating parents. Um, how do you educate them with certain books that they can read? You know, when I was pregnant, I remember reading you know, all kind of things to understand this thing I was getting myself in. Yeah. <laughs> and I tell you, it was overwhelming. Yes. <laughs> it was overwhelming. There was no streamlining of anything. I was just reading everything. Yes. Now, this, this Fathers Incorporated, they give you something where you understand real dad's experiences, the real experiences that we have, not just every and any. And they give them little books, and they even in courage, they have little books others their son could read while they're sitting in the barber shop. Just little booklet to right. point us to encourage father and children. Right. Which I found was so impressive because it was simple little things. Yes. You know that do with their sons, and you know I don't know if you want me to pause. Before. Yeah. Well. Um. Yeah. Well, Nancy saying um. If Currently, Did black right yeah. Nancy saying currently, black men are wanting part of their children's lives. They want to be that father. They want to, you know, help the children with, you know, being a present father that the kid have. So she's she's agreeing with you and saying yes. More fathers now are, you know, trying to be better, trying to be a better dad. That's right. They are trying, but. Like everybody else, when you have been um, infiltrated for years with negativity about yourself, it lowers your confidence. And that is why these support groups, I find them to be so helpful. Because what when I called, I came to understand, wow, they actually visit the fathers who call. Right. They put groups together of supportive services for fathers. Right. The emphasis is black fathers, of course. Yes. And so, yes, your caller is correct in that we have to do more because they were bombarded with more negativity. And I am fiercely protective of my husband. Like, as a young wife, I always knew he had it harder than I did. Right. I always understood that. Women, you know, in our quest for equality. Yes. This is my world. What and I look at what my grandmother went through, even with her partner, a black male and everything. It wasn't easy. No. Yeah. But in our quest for equality today, we have to find a softer side to support our men. Um, because of what they go through when they walk out the doors. Yes. But it's their reality versus ours. And so not that I'm marginalizing women at no, all. No. All I am saying is a way to preserve family life. There are times I mean times when look at I always always used to pause and think of listening to my husband's heart when he would express frustration on something as opposed to Oh, why is she being so snappy? He, right. he had a rough day at work or something like that. And I taught my daughter to do the same. Listen to your father. Yes. See, if it's comfy, you know. So that, that is part of the challenge. And I think too, I continue with yeah, what, yeah, hold one second. Um, I want to say I'm proud of you for bringing the awareness of supporting black men and supporting your partner because I think sometimes in this now and day age that we live in, where the woman being the breadwinner, they tend to be disrespectful of the male. So I, I, I like that point that you brought up there is that they need support. We need to support them, especially as you say, you listen and you saw the struggles so you know better. And when we know better, we do better. So I think that was an excellent point that you brought up there. 
Um, I wanted to ask you too. Um, last week I saw where the president and Marshall Montano did a culture awareness to help youths. What do you think um, that do you think that will help, and how much you think that will help to bring awareness to the youths with Marshall partnering up with the president? What's your thought on that? Well, my multi CMS model, the multicultural, multimodal, multi system speaks to that. It speaks to um, how all of the units have to now, it takes a village to raise a child. Right. That's what the president is trying to do. They didn't start it yet, she just proposed it. Right. And they're going to be doing it. And we have to look at our artists, and, um, which is Marshall Montano, one of our number one artists right. in the country. And it's good because they are role models and they can serve in that capacity with youths, inspiring them. But along that vein comes the concept that has to be changed in, in the curriculum because it has changed in the, in the U.S. And that is what's called intellectual equity, where the genius of the artists and the sportsmen and the construction workers, they are just as brilliant as the genius of our PhDs like myself or doctors and lawyers. Yes. And so our artists and sportsmen must be brought in as exemplary, yes. as examples to our young people. And that's why I was very ad 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 much admiring what the president reached out to Marshall Montano is trying to do. Nice. There are other groups that are doing similar things. Right. But we have to bring equality around intelligence in the Caribbean. This is a immense neglect of our um, education system where we so much emphasis on the British elitist tertiary education system where if you don't have a degree, you are nothing. Yes. And, and you are not as valued. And here we have Brian Lara, who's our cricketer of, of the century. Yes. And this man is working in India right now. India hired him. He had to migrate there to get work. Such is a lack of respect yes. of our system. Yes. You know, uh, uh, our other intelligence. There are multiple intelligence. It's arts, it's, it's music. Why is it we're not using our Calypsonians and artists as is done in the U.S.? Right. Many great sportsmen have been mo models. Whether if you're uh, Magic Johnson or whoever, you are models. Yes. Young people. Yes. So it's a great thing what she's doing. But I would want it to become an official uh, approval of our of our um system, in the education system, right. respect the intelligence of our artists right. as well, sportsmen and so on. Very yeah, good. That was a good point, All good right. point, Phyllis. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah. Another um, group is the, is the Dada Gang. And th this um, I was not familiar, but their mission is to, again, committed to building uh, globally, they're more global and creating a safe space for black men. So it says the Dada Gang, the Dada Gang? The Dada Gang. Okay. D -A -D -D -A -N -G, the Dada Gang. Okay, the Dada Gang. Yeah. And that is a group that they are creating safe space, but they are going beyond. You know, it's an international group. Okay. And it's a lot of community support and socialization. They have over 150,000 followers already. And it, what is this displaying? The, what their mission is, is to display a bond between fathers and children. Right. And visually represent it through pictures and little short movies and showing the love and a father hugging the child. Right. It's a difficult thing. I, but when my daughter was born, I literally had to show my husband how to love her. Right. You know, I, I said to him, blow bubbles in her stomach. And he said, what are you talking about? Yeah. He said, blow bubbles. Yeah. Oh, bubbles. It's up her toesies and her nosies and yeah. all these things. And he was like, oh, my God, all of this. Yeah. <laughs> and then he became so natural at it. After a while, you see her, he will hug her more and so That's not something he knew. Right. And I probably poured a lot of that playfulness onto him, but he didn't. Thing that that needed to be displayed to a child, a yes. little baby. Yeah. Well, yes, it does. Yeah. You know, and something as simple as how do you hug? If you never had that put, you know, as part of your socialized experiences as a child, 
It's difficult to know how to send it on to your own children. For real. So it's, it's, and they grow up in adulthood. And they grow up having yes. husbands. And they through the life. You're right. They, yes, they don't. They really don't. And this is the sad part for me. Um, that they don't. But if you take your time and show them and make it fun. They are ready to learn. Eh? Yes. They are ready to learn. So I say that to say, sometimes this dad gang apparently, they are into just these little demonstrating, being demonstrative with love. Yes. How do you do that? And I think that's a group that could be of support to people. A lot of people, people, even white men, they'll tell you that it, you know, showing love is the emotional intelligence is what, Many of them lack that ability to demonstrate, you know, their emotions and feelings. And that's why relationships break up so quickly. Yeah. People don't take the time to, to build on that. Right. You know, imagine father-child, how mm. difficult, especially if it's a father-daughter, it's even harder yeah. in that sense. And so that is a good group I want you know, to look at. And another group is Dope, D-O-P-E, uh -huh. Black Dad. Okay. Dope black dads. And it's more on WhatsApp. This one exists. Yes. Between, it, it's more on WhatsApp. And the founder is a guy by the name of Marvin Harrison. And what he does, it's more on WhatsApp and with friends and people who join. And again, another way of supporting people through a modern technology of WhatsApp. And it's focused again on black parenting experiences and their understanding of masculinity. Right. We have to help our black men to understand that masculinity doesn't have to be how macho you are. Right. How much money you make alone. Right. It's also how how you can help bring out the tenderness in a person, in your partner, right. in a woman. Are you yourself being tender in the way you would speak right and so i think these are but these are transformational um practices actually that could apply to any race or ethnicity or culture yes it's just that our focus is on black fathers for yes. obvious reasons today yes but but what i want us to not forget it is the strength of our black men yes the powerful strength of our black men to have endured all what they have endured historically from slavery come up to now yes to have endured all the discriminatory practices to go on an interview and know that you are the best person yes but you weren't even given a chance, chance. you know when i first returned to the region i was in shock in an interview where i was one of the panelists and at the end of the interview i realized i said so okay we went through all the candidates and they said to me, yes. And I said, well, what is that pile over there? And they said, oh, that's the people from, um, and they named the community. Right. The communities were the lowest socioeconomic communities. Wow. The greatest poverty, the greatest failure of, of black families. Yes. They were the highest concentration of, of black men in prison. That was the community. I'm not going to tell you, Felix. Yes. I was shaking. Wow. I was leaving America where I understand the illegality of such, a, su such an operation. Exactly. That they could even think it is okay to practice it openly among themselves. Yeah. And then to tell me, to tell me <laughs> in, the most, in the most flippant, oh, there's just the people from so and so and so and so. I was shaking. I was so scared. I didn't want to be around them. I just <laughs> calmly said, you know what, guys? This cannot be done. We cannot do this. Right. Let's hand me, hand me that sack, please. We are going through every one of these people. Right. And we are calling them in. So our interview is not over. Right. This is what I said. Right. It is not over. And so you call up before who talk about poor communities. Yes. It's real. Yes. People... People are discriminated and based on where they live. Yes. So I yes. quickly call up some of my colleagues in the other parts, the other ministries in the rest of the country, and found that that was not an unusual practice. Really? It was well, 
it wasn't just in this one I I institution that this was, this is not an unusual practice. Your caller captured it beautifully when they raised the issue of communities, the poor communities, yeah. what happens there. Wow. It's real. And to think that our black men have to go through all oh. of this. Yes. All the time, because no matter what part of the world you are in, yes. the black is always at the, the bottom of the, of the ladder. Always. If you were to look holistically at it. And that is why, if you understand the power of black people, the fact that they could survive, the fact that they could keep coming, our black men are really remarkable. And it is on that basis that I wanted to put emphasis on the black man, the strength of the black man. Yes. The power, the brilliance in so many ways to even survive this kind of onslaught for so many years as something as brutal, nothing in the world history was as brutal as slavery. Yes. And and they, they survived it. Hmm. We are here, we are here and thriving. And so we as women have to continue to uplift our men. Right. Our black men. And, and keep from a point of unification and understanding and listening to their hearts and recognizing that if they're afraid, it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to be scared because it is a scary time now in this post-Trump era. Yes. And you want to know, Trump has impacted the world, eh? Yes. Because in the Caribbean, you see the Trumpian thinking in some of our <laughs> opposition leaders in, throughout the Caribbean. Yes. You see in the Trumpian thinking. You see in the kind of, you know, wherever he supported, they supported. Right. And when Trump said, you don't need to take the vaccine, Solved. Next thing I hear one person say, one member of parliament, oh, forget about the vaccine. Don't take the vaccine. Meanwhile, 10 people die in a day yes. in our living yes. country. Yes. So that was ignorance. Trump and other things that he has influenced the people around the world. Wow. So this is a different time. It's a challenging yes. time. Very challenging. Again, for us, it's a challenging time. It's a step backward, actually. But it's something that we would have had to face because it was always there. Mm -hmm. The fact that he brought it out by tapping into their resentment of black upliftment meant, in a sense, on some levels, we have to thank him for it. Yes. Because now we know exactly what we are dealing with. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, I am ready for all the questions. Okay, so I have Sheldon here saying people will always judge you by your neighborhoods, you know, we live in, and that's just wrong. And it's true because he's from the neighborhood, let me say La Romaine. You know, you have the different areas of Trinidad and Tobago where, you know, they stigmatize the people. And, and you yes. know, that is really wrong because you have some good people come out of these areas. Exactly. You know? And you have, and, and, and the, those communities show their tenacity their strength of character to even survive with so much less than the, the affluent, privileged communities. Yes. So it is, it's really and truly unfortunate that they have to place that kind of emphasis yes. on, on, the, on the communities. But he is right. It's a clear-cut discrimination. Yes. Something as simple as water and light. Yes. You know, when I was in the Senate, I remember we were having a debate and I understood something that I never understood before. And that was that only 30% of our country have water all the time. time. Why is that? Some, most communities have water two days a week. Yes. And my executive assistant, she had water two days a week. And those two days, I would tell her, stay home. Um, when you finish full up all your water and your tanks and everything and finish do your washing and finish do everything, then come to work. Right. So she would reach to work in the afternoon. That was an arrangement I had with her. Right. And and it's whereas in a community where I live, for instance, when lights go, it goes for like half an hour. Right. And that's like about three times a year at most. Right. We have communities that, they, that lights will go and it will go for days. Yes. yes. Lights are gone. Electricity is cut for days. Hmm. And and in fact, the other day when um, water went, I, I one of the, the workers 
in speaking on the phone, I heard him saying, my God, this is the person from, and he named the area, which I, thank God, live in a very lovely community and area. Yeah. And he said, you know we can't have water going there? And I paused for a minute, and after I said to my husband, look at that, look how privileged and blessed we are. Right. That he could actually make a statement. Yes. That we cannot have water going there. Yes. And it, it's just not, and sure enough, water came back within half an hour. Right. So, so what I'm saying to you, when things like that happen, I say to my husband and my daughter, we do not have the right to complain if we lose water right. or lights for any period of time. I have bottles of water filled in my certain parts in my, um, you know, in, in my pantry for that purpose in emergency, even though I never had to use it really. Right. I, I say that to say, when I lived in, uh, in the Petrotrin grounds, which is our oil company where my husband worked, right. if they were cutting off water for whatever reason to re-establish a pipeline, line or something they will come around the day before and tell you right. and they will bring you a huge bottle when i tell you huge i don't know that might be about 10 gallons i can't say and put it down for your use for that one day that right. they're going to cut in off water and even though they did that each time they never came and cut off the water they managed to do the pipeline thing right. without cutting it off but they told us the day before so I told my husband, we cannot complain. Right. If anything happens along those lines, let's just sit back and experience what others go through. Right. All the time. Right. All the time. And this is the reality of being poor around the world. Right. You know? So, you know, out of this, we, let's, let's celebrate Phyllis, our black fathers who managed to survive through all of these discriminatory factors. Yes. And the privilege and the benefit of of seeing, you know, yes, based on numbers, we are doing better. Right. You are seeing more black people and fathers owning property, educated through the system and so forth. Okay? So Martin Luther King and others didn't die in vain. No. It's, it's it, we see in it. Yes. And we have to remind our young black youths to seize opportunities that are there yes. Yes. instead of turning into the drug world or something which is attractive world because they pay them more and they give them false you know Hope. equivalencies of yes. success and yes. so on but they have to show them the lifeline yes. the lifelong better life you can have when you seize opportunities small business opportunities yes all of that is what my model is going to be speaking to in addressing crime and in addressing the inequities in our system. Right. Yeah. So I have a little segment I call Ditch It or Keep It. All right? Um, okay. So we're going to do a little segment with that. All right. So you ready? Yeah. All right. Cuckoo or breadfruit oil down? Breadfruit oil down. Okay. okay. Flying fish or red snapper? Flying fish for me, even though it's in Barbados more so, but I love flying fish. Yes. Yeah. Pigtail or ham bones? Pigtail for me. Yes. <laughs> All right. Cassava. <laughs> yeah. Cassava pone or sponge cake? Cassava pone for me. All right. Um, rice and peas or spinach rice? Well, I like rice and peas, but I like spinach rice too. Yeah. But I'll say rice and peas. Okay. Chicken foot sauce or cow foot sauce? Uh, chicken foot sauce. Okay. Stew chicken or curry chicken? For me, stew chicken. I am not a curry chicken lover. Ironically, my maiden name is an Indian name. And yes. Curry is largely associated, of course, in our culture with the Indian um, foods. Yes. But for some reason, when I turned 40, I became allergic to, to several things. Yeah. And one of them was curry, very yellow curry. Yeah. As opposed to more darker curry. Yeah. I became allergic to that, to avocado, to ripe mangoes. What? I allergic to ripe to mangoes <laughs> when I'm in the Caribbean. Here I am. Yes. So I am 
always mindful, but I, my husband, I must tell you, he could eat roti with curry and all this. Every day they give him a chance. <laughs> I do eat it too, but I have to be mindful and tell people, could you cook when you cook in with it? You know, little, yeah. Not as much curry and stuff. Right, <laughs> yeah. You know, too, after a time, your body just can't take it because I too live in here going in 20 years now. Certain things I can't eat no more. Pepper is one. Yeah. I can't. Acid reflux. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah. And it happened when I turned 40. So I, I, you know, I really don't know what about this still in 40. Brought this up. But all of these allergies I just told you happened when I turned 40. Wow. <laughs> but it just came out. Yeah. Point. Yeah. yeah. All right. Corn soup or fish broth? Fish broth. Okay. Um, New Year's or Easter? For me, New Year's. New Year's, okay. Yeah. And, and the last one will be Dalpuri or Bus Up Shot? Dalpuri for <laughs> sure. That Bus Up Shot is highly overrated in my view. But there are people who love the Bus Up Shot. I love it, I love it. <laughs> Even they love doubles. That's another thing I'm not so fascinated, but that's a big thing in our culture. Um, doubles, with um, Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and so Polori too. <laughs> yeah. Polori. Polori. Oh, well, no, I like Polori. Yeah. I like Polori with the nice and the Sahina. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know the yeah. Sahina. Yeah. The only yeah, one I, I don't like, like is Accra. The one with the saltfish. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I love that. Really? <laughs> Absolute favorite meal, simple as this, with some provision and salt. Me too, I love that. And I love the Jamaican up stale and um, ovush, what they call ovush, the, the, the yellow, the yellow. Oh, um, aki, aki. Aki and saltfish. Yeah. When I was up there the other day, almost every other day we ate aki, aki and saltfish. Salt salt <laughs> no, no, you know, the people knew was as we walking, come on, come on. Yeah. We, we love aki and salt saltfish. Fish, yeah. You know, yeah, no, no, they don't. It no. don't grow. No. Yeah, but that's and a specialty. Our are not made to the standard of the of what I eat with the Jamaican. Upstairs, yes. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> it's different. But I mean, we all can cook all over, you know. Like yeah. myself, I love southern food. Yes. In America. Oh my God, that soul food. Yes, yeah, soul food. Uh, so, oh my goodness, we can't we can't complain when it comes to our food, eh, girl? No, 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 no. We have good food. And the Kalalu is different too. They call their Baji Kalalu, but I like that one too. Yeah, I like Kalalu. I just love Caribbean food. Yeah. When we were living abroad, my husband would not eat any food but Caribbean food. So fortunately, a Caribbean restaurant opened in Long Island, so I used to get Caribbean food. The man wouldn't eat American food. Yes. It's just Caribbean food. <laughs> Unless it's soul food, American soul food, yeah. fine. Yes. You know, so... I'm thankful. All these are things we have to be thankful for. Course, yeah. Yes. Well, Dr. Nichols, I want to say thank you so much for hanging with us. And, you know, with closing, what would you like fathers to know? Because we, they go, they, their day will be on Sunday. And just leave them with a nice note. I would like to thank them. I would like to thank our black fathers for their tenacity, for their continued effort in trying to do and, and advance their families, take care of their families in spite of the negativity. I want to tell them, don't give up wherever they are, whether it's incarcerated or, or just know that they their effort is appreciated. So for me, it's thank you. Thank you so much, black fathers, black men, black sons, for just black husbands, for all that you have done in spite of. Yes, yes. Well, yeah. we couldn't get it more better tonight. And you know, thank you. Just thank you for being my guest. I hope that I did well. And I hope you don't be a stranger to Motivational Monday. And anytime you're willing to come back and hang with us, we'll be willing to have you. Okay, thank you for having me. And you have done well, not just tonight, but all the time. All right, thank so you so much. Finished. All right, okay, have a blessed bye. and wonderful week. And tell your husband I say happy Father's Day. Thank you. And you too, tell your family, husband, father, whoever, same thing. All right. And the community, all of you out there, happy Father's Day. 
Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. There you have it. Uh, that was very interesting, you know, with Dr. Nichols, you know, giving us Dr. Sharon Gopal McNichols hanging with us, just giving us good vibration on respecting the black men, the black fathers, fathers of all creed and race, you know, and um, I just want to say two happy Father's Day to all the Father's Day um, coming on Sunday. My father, he, he passed 20 something years ago, but he was the best father ever, I would say. And I, to all the fathers out there, don't give up hope, you know. Um, the struggle is real, but just be the best dad you can be because some people would have cherished if they had their father now. And then some dads are just worthless that they just don't care. But I hope that, you know, as Nancy said earlier on, fathers are now trying to be in their children's lives and trying to be at graduation and try to call them for the birthdays and just do a better job in being a dad and with that said um saturday i will be having my five year swag all inclusive event and this event starts from five well i know you guys will be here from six to one or two in the morning um sexy women and gentlemen that's what it's about come out uh, advanced ticket i still got some physical tickets are uh, eighty dollars and eighty dollars including you get in tito's you have vodka which is um which is tito's plus absolute you're gonna gonna have hennessy we're gonna have um bacardi uh we're gonna have a lot of stuff some sangria we have wine uh, we have food all the finger foods yes eighty dollars come out and just mingle and have some fun and we also have um a rhythm section i have cutters rhythm section will be here with us i have dj blue and his team i have you never know what is passing through so just come out on saturday god's willing and we're gonna have fun i want to give away one more ticket tonight and again you can only be a winner once so if you win a ticket you're not allowed to win again so it's just a simple question i'm going to ask you guys um just one question how much years i have been doing motivational monday and what month did i start that's easy if you have been looking for me you will know now it's 905 i'm going to wait a minute or two uh, again how many years i've been doing motivational monday and what month did i start it that's very easy um so come out and just mingle all right um life is good that's all i could say love in the house all the time right I will give you guys one more minute. It's 906, 907. Anybody want, they can type it out. And let me see if you get it correct. Again, how much years I've been doing motivational Monday and what month did I start it? Okay, one more minute. And I want to say congratulations to all the winners. And all those that win a ticket for swag, you know I'm a giver. And you can't do nothing without giving. That's my, that's my way. Right? So we have some seconds again. Okay. And guys, you know, just have a blessed, wonderful and safe week. Happy belated birthday to my BFF, Carleen. May God bless you. We'll take a drink on Saturday, although we went out, but still, we celebrate the whole month. All right? 907, nobody put it in the comments. All right. So, again, thank you once again for logging into Motivational Monday, where each one teach one, guys. Have a blessed, wonderful, and safe week. Love you guys. See you guys.